its significance. Uh, I think many of you know what a wonderful teacher he is. Many of you have read his excellent works of scholarship, his contribution to collaborative research projects, um, in the, uh, the, the significant one in Lebanon that uh, he, he's done with uh, our colleague Elaine Chase and Diana Lauriard, who's here, and um, the wonderful work he's done with Mario Novelli. So his agenda is wide ranging in his, in, in his interests, wonderful as a collaborative colleague, and a lovely writer, as you're going to hear now. <laughs> Um, thank you so much, Elaine. <laughs> that was quite an overwhelming introduction. I haven't heard that length of introduction from you, so it was amazing to, to, to hear. And thank you for, for recognizing the work that, uh, that I've been doing. Um, I am uh, absolutely delighted uh, to um, have the presence of His Excellency um, Ambassador again to the Nigeria. Thank you so for uh, coming to UCL and attending this event. Uh, it really means a lot uh, in support of the work that I am doing, but also in support of the uh, work on Nepal, which is which is quite significant. Um, thank you so much, panelists, uh, colleagues. Uh, uh, who have found the time to read my book, uh, and uh, um, I don't know how they found, I'm nervously waiting for their critical commentary on it, uh, so I'm hoping that they will be nice and kind, but to look forward to learning from uh, what they have to say. Uh, but also thank you so much everyone for coming to this event, um, and family, uh, and uh, everybody else. So what I'm planning to do is to talk a little bit about the journey of the book. Uh, so uh, I guess everyone has a story to tell about uh, how they wrote the book. Um, I haven't written many books, like Mike has, of course, on the map. Uh, but uh, uh, it's a different kind of uh, presentation, I thought. And I was thinking about how do I introduce my book, rather than introducing a paper or a you know, research presentation or something. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that background and then um, um, say a little bit about what I uh, have argued in the book uh, and uh, uh, and then basically conclude and hand over to um, Battery Lane and then colleagues to comment on it and hopefully this will be an interesting discussion afterwards. Um, that's, the, that's the plan. Um, so uh, as uh, uh, I am uh, originally from Nepal, um, uh, obviously at the time when the Maoist insurgency uh, was um, quite severe during late 1990s and early 2000s, um, and uh, a lot of my um, relatives, distance relatives, um, who were working in the police and the, and the army, uh, and also some of them actually uh, were, you know, joining the Maoist rebellion. Um, so while during that time, as many Nepali, fellow Nepalis would know, that it was a very tense environment, uh, and schools across the country were coming under attack by both uh, the Maoists as well as the security forces. Um, and uh, every day we used to see the reports of uh, schools being um, destroyed, textbooks being uh, burned down, um, you know, young students being kidnapped and taken to the forests for uh, political ed education, um, and, uh, and students and teachers being stopped on the way to school uh, for, um, uh, you know, suspicion of their collusion with the rebels, um, and a lot of tense uh, environments that everybody in the education sector were, were experiencing. So I wanted to kind of investigate the impact of armed conflict on, on education. Uh, and uh, that is the reason why I started my PhD to look at, okay, how is conflict impacting on teachers, students, uh, and educational processes in, in general? 
And then when I began my PhD, then I was introduced to interesting literature around uh, how education is not necessarily a positive uh, um, uh, phenomenon, that it can also contribute to produce conditions for uh, violent conflict. For example, the work uh, that Mario has done and other scholars, I was introduced to those. And uh, I began to look at how Nepal's educational development might have contributed to create and uh, exacerbate those conditions of conflict. And I ended up writing my PhD thesis talking a lot about how education was actually creating conflict rather than talking about how conflict had impacted on education. Of course, there's a lot that I've discussed on, on that as well. So that was the kind of the, the, the beginning. And then later on, I got involved in a number of research projects looking into um, the role of education in conflict transformation and addressing socioeconomic uh, disparities, uh, challenges around access to education, uh, quality of learning, um, you know, the role of teachers, teacher professional development. So those kinds of issues were quite prominent. A lot of international organizations were involved in collaboration with the Nepalese government and the civil society organizations in supporting in post uh, um, sort of uh, accord period after 2006. Um, those projects were also the inspirations to think about the ideas uh, and learning um, as part of this, uh, this book. Um, then also as part of my sort of professional work, academic work within UCL, um, uh, I worked on education, conflict and peace module and working with the uh, brilliant students coming from around the world uh, was absolutely inspirational and that also sort of motivated and, and now as uh, Elaine uh, mentioned, the master's program um, that began with the, from the scratch and now a full master's program on conflict emergencies and peace um, was another inspiration to uh, really uh, do this book. Um, and also over the past six, seven years, I've been uh, working with other colleagues uh, to run um, seminar series on conflict and emergencies. And we've invited probably around 30 scholars from around the world uh, to speak at that um, uh, seminar. And most of the, the events are actually online available. And those discussions were also quite rich and, uh, and, and inspirational, and which actually fed into the development of this body of work within the Institute of Education, uh, in which this book is, I guess, is a part. Um, so, um, what is this book about? Um, as every author would say that, if you want to find out about my book, you have to buy it and read. Um, <laughs> but I can't really say that now because it's hugely expensive, but hopefully the paperback will be available and, uh, and many of you would have um, sort of, would be able to, to, to access it more easily. Uh, of course, through the institution, it is available to, to read. Um, but I'm going to just quickly lay out what this contributes. It, it, I hope that it contributes to the scholarship in the fields of um, education and conflict, which is a uh, you know, rapidly growing field, uh, which actually brings education and conflict together to try to understand um, how education can promote uh, peace, social transformation, social justice, equality, just um, equity, and, and so forth. So I begin the discussion in the book uh, with, the, with broad sort of debates in the field of education and conflict, and then look into the case of uh, Nepal, trying to draw upon this uh, Maoist insurgency and its uh, uh, interaction with uh, education. And then I try to sort of uh, do some theoretical abstraction and try to, to present 